Hey, what's good everyone? Brody here, and today I'm gonna show you all how I produced the song Backstage along with Taylor Morgan. So, um, story time before we dive into this, um, music-wise. Um, a couple days ago I put out a video for how I did the beat for the Sleep at Night Lately Sewer Person song. And if you look at the file names here, this beat was actually the beat made one before that one, so they were made like in succession. It was the same weekend that Taylor was staying with me. And we were writing a lot. I thought it was cool that there was so much that came from that one day that has been released. A lot of other really cool beats as well. And yeah, when we made this beat, we were we had done a lot that day. And we were just trying to experiment and do some weird things. So things wouldn't be stale as we kept writing. With this one, we wanted to mess around with a few different things. We wanted to work with a lot of swing and a lot of like triplet feel. And I wanted to try to make a beat that had like triplet feel drums, but with as like weird of a groove as I could think of versus just like triplet hats and a regular trap beat, just try, trying to go like outside the box a little bit. So yeah, it started off with Taylor's melody, which I then flipped and put drums on. We're at 163 tempo right now. And the melody that he sent was at 136. It was pitched down a little bit and we reversed most of it. So what he sent, or what, he didn't send it, what, he, what we made and then I put drums over was essentially this. So really cool loop, very, original very out there very cool and we wanted to just kind of take that and push it as far as we could so we went through i'll show about all the different stems we went through and reversed a lot of it pitched it up sped it up as well so the first two layers we have are this and this which together kind of make the main thing. I love how that sounds. I um, love reversing melodies because I feel like it gives you different melodic ideas you wouldn't otherwise think of, like the da 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 thing right here. It's so sick. Like, there's a lot of choices I don't think I would come up with if it wasn't for reversing a melody and getting inspired. Um, related to that, my song, You Will Always Be a Part of Me, the main vocal melody of the hook follows the guitar, which is a reversed um, guitar riff that I recorded. And I love that because it's something that would not have been, I would have not have written if it wasn't like referencing a reversed thing that I did. I like to compare it to. Um, hearing your own music like unbiased for the first time like it's got all of the melodic elements and like things that you do as a writer but reversing it is a fresh perspective it's not what you did so it lets you kind of hear your own thing like unbiased and for what it is and also there's just a little twinge of weirdness that a reverse sound has anyways so together i think it's a really really neat writing tool so we had those, the outro, we reverse, we half time that the lower part. We have this choir and this choir, which actually aren't reversed parts. We liked how they sounded as is. We have this lead in the second half of the hook. Really weird sounding, I love it. Then in the verse, we have these strings. And then a variation of that lead. And then the last sound is that same lead half-timed. And all together, you get this for the biggest parts of the hook.
really cool, really strange. I feel like that loop was just so inspiring to me. It really pushed me to do the drums that I did. It kind of influenced it. Very cool, very, I don't know. I've This beat was made almost a year ago at this point. It was last March. And I think in hindsight, it was probably one of my favorite beats of 2022. Just so out there, but still very me and Taylor. I was like hesitant on sending this beat out a lot. I loved it so much. I kind of held it close and didn't, and I wanted to make sure the right song was made on it. So I kind of didn't send it out much until eventually I had listened through it and finally had my own vocal ideas on it. It just spoke to me. So then I knew it had to be a part of my project and my own, my own music. I love how, how that happened. Kind of, you kind of know when you know. Cool. And then from there, we go to our drums and I'll play a little bit of the full thing and then I'll solo out everything. So it's fun. It's definitely out there. It, it's the whole drums on the triplet flow, but very strange groove to it. It starts off with the organic hat for my kit. I love it. It's very stereo, kind of flammy, and has this really neat sound to it. I'm using the um, Logic Step Sequencer a lot for these drums. That's how I've been doing a lot of my drums lately. It's just got so much ways to customize your drums through it. You can change so many parameters easily. I have it all set on the grid of eight triplets. can change velocity when I want. can change the retriggering, do an octave higher for some interesting parts. Add two clap samples. Uh, this one is my that clap run through little bit of bit crush and it's shortened a bunch to make it super tight then i layer it with my organic snare also cut short and run through a little bit of bit crusher i like to do just a small amount to not not necessarily sound like there's bit crush on a sample but to change the tonality make it a little bit driven a little bit different and together, um, those make this sound super tight, super percussive, super wide, super in your face. That actually made it to my newest drum kit. I called it the backstage clap just because I loved how that sounded and I wanted to have access to it quickly. So we have this now, added a plug chant, my aura hat. Again, running through a little bit of Bit Crusher. I run a lot of my drum sounds through Soothe. I find that the high energy, like the high frequency of hats adds a lot of energy, but sometimes it's too harsh and takes over the mix and kind of pierces my ears a bit. So this is a nice way to tone it down. Sometimes I prefer that over just turning the volume down because I don't want to I don't want to change the perceived volume that much. I just want it to be smoother. And same thing with another hat, the cone hat for my kit. Then the 808s. This is labeled incorrectly because I was kind of bouncing between a lot of different 808 samples. So I decided on the long plug 808 from Taylor's kit which I run through micro shift. This is it normally. And it gives it like some chorus to it and a nice stereo wideness. One thing I love about micro shift is this focus knob. It um, decides at what frequency it starts widening. So everything 88.8 Hertz and below is mono. That way the super low end doesn't get messed up or anything that stays mono and then at 88 it starts to split and get wider and fit with just the wideness and weirdness of this beat it sounded too di different without the micro shift 
and it's really subtle but it kind of fills out the sound a bit more <laughs> I love this. I love doing stereo width on 808s and like parallel processing type things to kind of make them fit in context. Because like depending on the stereo image of the beat, the melodic instruments, the drums, etc., sometimes I think you need that. That way it it all marries together and sounds like one. So yeah, I do that. Just subtle mix knobs, so it's not like it's too wide. Like I could go super nuts with it. Which honestly does sound kind of sick, but I kept it low. I have a little bit of detune, no delay, because it's such um, a rhythmically tight part. I didn't want it to be like loose rhythmically, so I opted to keep that as tight as possible and the detune just be a little bit different. Then from there, we layer it with my go to kick, just adding a little bit of a smack towards the, the biggest hits. Here's the um, pattern, too, of the 808s. I think it's kind of cool. First half through, it's a little bit... Um, I'll, play the whole, I'll play it in context to everything. First half through, it's a little bit more weird and disjointed, and then it gets more simplified and sustained throughout. Yeah, that's essentially it for the beat. When it came time to making the song, I exported this out and worked with the full file of the beat, and I did some restructuring. See if you notice in this format, I have verse or no hook, verse, hook, verse, hook, and I wound up um, changing it so it was just hook, kind of longer verse, and then um, like longer verse in pre-chorus to hook, just hook, verse, pre-chorus, hook. And then at the very end, I did a big reverb throw on the outro just to make it super ambient and spacey. And yeah, that's how the song came to be. Super stoked with how it turned out. I think it's one of my most interesting beats I've done in a while. And I think that led to some really cool decisions on like the vocal side of it as well. Super excited to put this song out. I hope everyone likes it. I will link it in the description along with the video on the Garden Nav page if anyone hasn't checked it out and wants to listen to it. Um, if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. It does mean a lot. Um, if you have any questions about anything I went over or want me to clarify anything more, feel free to message on Instagram, Twitter. Feel free to comment here, and I'll get back to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate you all. Peace out.